Welcome to Authors Revealed. I'm Becky Anderson. We are thrilled to have New York Times best-selling author James Fry here. He's the author of A Million Little Pieces with his new novel. It's called Katerina. Well, James, welcome back to Anderson's. Thank you. Yeah. I love Anderson's. I love bookstores. I'm happy to be here. Yeah, it was great to have you here. And I, I think you were here for The End Game, for The Calling, was the last book you were here. So that was probably about four years ago? Five yeah, years ago? four yeah. five years ago. Right. Well, it's great to have you back, because you're back here with an adult novel, yeah. Katerina. Yeah. Yeah, which is it was, is really wonderful. And Thanks. it's been out in the world, or like on our shelves and other bookstore shelves, about almost a week. So, Almost a week. Yeah. Six days. Yeah. I hope people are buying it. Yeah. I hope you sold like a million copies yeah. already. Well, well, well <laughs> I hope this interview will help. But it's it's been about 10 years since you've had a, a novel out there. So how does it feel after that kind of, because you've done a lot of stuff in between, but to have this one out with sort of that, that spell of not doing it, I mean, was this was this more of a joy? Was this stressful? Was it, or was it more of a, a something that you really wanted to do and it felt great just sitting down and writing this novel? It wasn't stressful. Um, it was probably all of the other things. Yeah. I, uh, yeah, I hadn't written an adult book. I call them big boy books in a long time. Yeah. And like a year and a half, maybe a little more ago, I was just depressed, right? And uh, I have this shrink I call now and then. And mm -hmm. I called him and I told him I was depressed. I was really depressed. I was like, I was like, dude, I wake up every day and I want to drive my car into a tree. Um, and he sort of laughed and he was like, what do you, what do you, um, oh, the first question he asked me, he said, are your earrings in? And I said, no. And he goes, what are you wearing right now? And I said, oh, a pair of khakis and a Izod polo shirt. And he said, are you at your, your big house in Connecticut? And I was like, yeah. And he was like, man, you want to kill yourself because you forgot who you are. Mm -hmm. He was like, you used to make fun of dudes like you. You used to taunt them and mock them, and you've become one of them. Yeah. He said, the only way out is to sit down and, and write a book and, and to do what makes you happy, which is be alone in a room for a long period of time with a lot of really loud punk rock and heavy metal playing and stringing words together to yeah. try to tell a story. Right. And so I took his advice. I literally, like, Went home, put all the earrings back in, <laughs> threw the polo the shirt away, it, yeah, right. and it felt good, and it felt right, and it made me happy. So I, I wrote the book. I wrote the book quickly, maybe six months. Mm -hmm. um, it was a joy to do. Oh, it was fun. Great. Yeah. Um, and there'll be more. So just feeling comfortable in you and what you're and what you're writing. That's great. Yeah. Um, so, so what are you hearing since it's been only out maybe six days? What are you hearing from readers who are familiar with your work and those who maybe are, are the first time coming to your work? I mean, I've gotten hundreds of letters from readers who've read my other books. Mm -hmm. Generally positive. Um, they they don't people don't tend to send you letters if they right. hate your book. Yes. Yeah. Um, so that's been cool. I write everybody back and say thank you. You know, the reviews have been interesting and exactly what we expect, which is they're either spectacularly good or spectacularly terrible. Um, and yeah. I like that. Yeah. I don't want to write a book that um, doesn't force people to take a position on it one way or the other. Right. I would rather have somebody hate it than have them be able to shrug it off. Right, sure. Um, touring's been fun. It's nice to be out. It's nice to say thank you to readers, yeah, to sure. say thank you to, to booksellers, to say thank you to bookstores, to, to say um, it's nice to be here. Thanks for all the support over the years. Yeah. Well, you know, I know that you're talking about the joy is back, you know, for you in writing. And I think I read that you have two or three or four more books going in your head that you, so, so is that joy, is that kind of that anticipation of sitting down and doing it again? I mean, after this tour, of course. And I mean, I don't know if there's anticipation right. right now. You know, I'm in a city a day for the next 16 days. So okay. right now it's just sort of like getting through the yeah. schedule. Right, right. Um, I definitely think about it a lot. I, I roll things through my head. 
I was thinking about um, a book as we drove here. You know, I'm uh, I'm staying in downtown Chicago, so it's probably a little over an hour to get out mm -hmm. of here. Um, and I th I was thinking about a book for a while. Yeah. I know what it'll be. I don't know exactly what it'll be, but I I, I tend to have these ideas that are pretty broad and at a certain point I just know it's time to sit down and do it. Yeah. The publisher you're working with this time, Scout Press, which is distributed by Simon & Schuster, it's the first time you've worked with them. And it was an interesting story that I read that um, Allison Callahan, who's the VP executive editor there, had said about how this book came to them. But it all started with, she said, with contacting you or going through your agent contacting you to get a blurb for a book from another author. But, but tell us how what this experience has been being with a completely different publisher this time and and how that sort of got this book where it is now um, so yeah I get sent books to quote them a lot mm -hmm. um, my my general policy is if somebody wants to send me a book I'll give them a quote I think it's cool to help writers I think it's cool I know it made me feel good when I was a young writer and somebody gave me a quote mm -hmm. and, and it's easy to do and so I I got a book from her um, it had her phone number on it, and I just called her up. I was like, hey, I got your book. I checked it out. It's good. What kind of quote do you want? And and I guess that doesn't happen. Yeah, um, right. She was cool and <laughs> grateful and said thank you, and then called my agent and was like, if, if he writes another book, please send it to us. Um, I finished writing this book in between Christmas and New Year's mm -hmm. of... 2017, so less than a year ago, yeah. um, and we sent it to uh, four publishers, um, all people I knew or had worked with before. Um, you know, we got offers from all four, but I really loved Allison's enthusiasm for it. Mm -hmm. she, she was a she's a great reader. She's a great editor, but she's a great reader. Yeah. Um, I I I loved. Um, the publisher of Gallery, which Scout is part of, a right. woman named Jen Bergstrom. I met the PR department. Um, they were awesome, and it just felt nice. It felt yeah. good. Um, not not to hold anything against the other people we spoke to, yeah. but Scout felt great. They have a great list. They're good people. They've been awesome. Yeah, and she, I think she's been a fan of yours since a Million Little Pieces. She loves your writing, the way you write. So, so it that, doesn't, right that doesn't hurt. <laughs> That's right, exactly, exactly. Doesn't, so, there's this yeah. old dumb quote um, that all writers love three things. Mm -hmm. Money, distractions, and praise. And praise, yeah. Right, so. Right. No kidding. So, so let's get back to Katarina. So it, you know, it goes back and forth between 1992 and 2017. And one of the main characters, Jay, is 21 years old in 1992, and he's in Paris. And I want to know how much of this book, you know, considering some of your other books, is autobiographical. And and writing this book because you went to Paris when you were that young, I believe. And how much it, how much of this was a catharsis for you writing this, considering where you were, and how it got you out of you know some major doldrums, right? Yeah. So. I always laugh because if I publish a book as a memoir, everybody wants to know what in it isn't true. Yeah, right. And if I publish it as a novel, everybody wants to know what yeah. is. I will say I work in a gray area that, that isn't really fiction and isn't really nonfiction. Yeah. It exists somewhere in between. It's nothing new. Plenty of writers have done it. Oh yeah, but you write what you know, right? What you write you what you know, you write what you feel. feel. Right. Um, you know the the it the book jumps back and forth between a 21 year old in Paris mm -hmm. and uh, a a guy in LA today who's written a few books and had a pretty successful career mm -hmm. and is and is sort of looking back upon it. Yeah. Um, I ran off to Paris when I was 21 to be a famous writer, um, and I live half the time now in Los Angeles. Um, the Paris stuff wasn't particularly cathartic to write at all. It mm -hmm. was fun. It right. was fun thinking back on the madness of my life there and, and creating a mad, crazy, ridiculous life for the character in yeah. the book. Yeah. Um, the stuff in 2017, 
uh, character was pretty cathartic for me. It tracks certain aspects of my life pretty closely. Um, the whole book was fun. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I, I hear writers sometimes talk about how they dread going to write a book, right? Mm -hmm. For me, it's the best part. It's the yeah. most fun. It, 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 that my job is not just writing the book, but getting the book ready for publication, publication, press, um, readings, doing a whole lot of stuff. But yeah. m the part that brings me the most joy is the actual sitting alone in a room writing the book. I love to do it. It makes me deeply happy. And this, this book was super fun to write yeah. after a long time yeah. not doing it. Wow. And, I, and I know you, you and like many authors, do most of your edits, so you really don't have an editor getting the book when you think you're done with it and editing it. So which is, and which I think is 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 really wonderful because basically what we're seeing is what you wrote. So you yeah. this book's a first draft. Yeah. The only right. thing we did do it was copy edit it. I've yeah. never read it. I've never read any book that I've written. Um, and four of the five were published as first drafts. Um, I try to be as precise and deliberate as I possibly can the first time through. And, and I, I also deeply believe in this old Buddhist thought um, or this Buddhist belief called first thought, best thought, which is the first thing you do is generally the thing that's truest to what you're trying to do. Right. And, and so I just leave it alone. Yeah. So how did, how did you, I mean, only your first book, A Million Only Pieces, was edited. So how did you negotiate that with your, with your, your yeah, upcoming novels then. How did that work out? I was lucky enough that A Million Little Pieces and the subsequent books have sold enough copies that I can make certain yeah. contractual requests that are granted. Um, I not only, you know, control the editorial process, I do the covers of the books, I do the copy on the back of the book and then the inside of the book. I do oh. the page layout. I do all of it. Wow. Um, I think of a book not just as the words, but the whole thing is a presentation. Mm -hmm. I don't. I, I think the cover is important, and yeah. and if I'm going to put my name on it, I want it to be what I want it to be. I think page layout is incredibly important. I don't do conventional things. I don't have paragraph indentations. I lay words out on pages in unconventional ways. It's it's important to me. I think it's part of. And I love the way you laid this out. The text in this was was really great. Thank you. Yeah, I think it lent to what I'm reading and what I'm understanding. That's yeah. the idea that you yeah. that that how the pages look on a page mm -hmm. is part of trying to make a reader enjoy what they're reading and also trying to make them feel things. Yeah. So, so this book sort of starts with Jay, who is, you know, it's 2017, and he gets a message, a Facebook message. So tell us a little bit about Katerina. What, what do we expect to, without any spoilers, because we don't want to give too much away, because it had me crying at the end. That's all I'm going to say. Good. <laughs> Glad you cried at okay. the end. Yeah. But, but tell us a little bit about what, what readers can expect from Katerina. I mean, I think it's a big, sweeping love story, you know, the, 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 the part in Paris, which is in 1992, is about two people falling in love, and they ultimately drift out of each other's lives, and then they reconnect with each other 25 years later. Mm -hmm. I think everybody has somebody in their life that at one point they loved who they lost, and I think a, a lot of people wonder where that person is right. and what they're doing and how life has treated them and, and wonder what it would be like to hear from them again. Um, I know I have a... I have a person like that in my life. I've never heard from them again, but I wonder about it all the time. Yeah. Um, and so I decided to write a book about what it would be like if one, if if the character heard from that person. Right. Um, but in the best case, it's a big sweeping love story about um, about art and about writing and about youth and about dreams and about heartbreak right. and mm -hmm. about whether you can fix things in your life that maybe you f***ed up. Yeah, right. And I think there's a lot, there's, a, there's regret in there. There's regret, but for But it's sure. getting to the other side, I guess, right? Yeah. Yeah. But I, but I, I love the fact, though, and I, in, in all the books you've written, you've put a, a lot of good humor in it. Good. Well. I want to make it. I want to well, make no, it. You, you have I want to make you laugh. Yeah, I want to make right. you cry. I want right. to make you feel 
a, yeah. a massive range of emotions very deeply. Yeah. And this book has it all. It has all those things from betrayal to, well, and love and sex. And it's got, but it's funny. It's got it's, a ton of sex. Uh, yeah, and it's daring. It's really daring. Thank I think you. It's, it's no, I, yeah. I, I, I believe yeah. in love and art and sex and taking big risks. Mm -hmm. I think it's okay to fail. I think it's okay to have, take a big risk and think people, have yeah. people think you missed, right. and have other people think you didn't. Yeah. You know, I, you know, thinking about the things you've written, and 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 also too the controversy around a million little pieces, and thinking that was that was like 15 years ago, wasn't it? Or almost 15 years ago. And I think about if that similar situation had happened today, it wouldn't be as big a deal as they made it back then. It was a perfect storm of a lot of things. Yeah. Um, you know, I I always say when I set out to be a writer at 21 years old, the, the dream was to be the most controversial, most divisive, most polarizing writer in the world. Um, I will let you decide if I, at any point in my career, achieved that goal, mm -hmm. but I, 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 it was weird and surreal and sometimes hard, but also thrilling yeah. and amazing and cool and a dream come true. Yeah. Well, and, and, you know, you've written some wonderful things since that, and I heard that there's going to be a film version of A Million Little Pieces. Is that, is that, has it been made or is it in production now? So I was at the premiere about a week oh, ago, wow. uh, exactly a week ago actually, yeah. at the Toronto Film Festival. The movie should be coming out sometime next year. Oh. Um, and Katarina is being turned into a film. Wow. So how, what did you think of A Million Little Pieces on the screen? I'm not the person to say because okay. it's pretty right. weird watching yeah. a movie about yourself, but I thought it was awesome. And yeah, I was good. deeply honored that they made it. Yeah. I love the people who made it. The audience, you know, gave it a standing ovation. Yeah. There were 1,200 people at the premiere, and it was cool. Like, if somebody wants to take something I've written and turn it into a movie, it's all awesome. Yeah. And I know you've done some screenwriting, but did you ever contemplate doing the screenplay for? So really? I wrote a number of the versions of that movie. Yeah. Um, when the people who actually ended up making it asked me for the rights to it, I said, yeah, you can have them. Um, I don't want to be involved. Mm -hmm. I don't need to be involved. Do whatever you want to do. Right. You should make your own interpretation of this okay. book into whatever you want to make it. Right. Um, uh, that'll be the same for Katarina as well. I wrote Katarina. Oh, you wrote the screenplay for Katarina. Yeah, oh, so wow. not, not quite. Um, okay. But I wrote, I wrote the screenplay for Katarina. Okay. It could be, it would, I can so see that as a great film. I, I hope so. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, you know I'm, I'm thinking about you know, a million pieces and I'm thinking about this book and it's sort of like um, a memoir, you know, that had some fictional aspects to it, which I think a lot of us add to all of our own stories. But on, on the other hand, now you have something that's fictional but has a lot of autobiographical aspects to it. It just seems sort of, I think that's sort of, I honestly, I, think there's a I, lot don't, of I don't think of them as any okay. different from each other. Okay. They're just books. Well, they're both, yeah. They're right. just books. Yeah. Um, they both exist in that gray area. Mm -hmm. I sometimes tell this story of, I, I wrote the first 40 pages of A Million Little Pieces mm -hmm. very, very quickly in like a day, day and a half. And after I wrote them, I showed them to my then girlfriend, now wife. Um, and I was debating in those originally f in original 40 pages, the main character's name is Jay. Um, and I said, should I have it be Jay or should I have it be James? And she said, well, why would you have it be Jay? And I said, well, I'm writing it as a novel. Mm -hmm. She said, why would you have it be James? And I yeah. said, well, Henry Miller used Henry Miller in his books. Yeah, and she right. said, have James. Mm -hmm. um, you know, like Katerina, I wrote A Million Little Pieces as a novel. It was submitted to publishers as a novel. Sometime during the publication process, a decision was made to publish it as a memoir. I don't think of them as really any different from each right. other. Okay. Okay. Well, there's some great scenes, and I, again, I don't want to spoil it because people have to read this for themselves. But I love the scene with Jay where he's dealing with, I mean, some of your description, that's why I can see this so visually on the screen. And, and when you're talking about the one agent, this young agent who's wearing this expensive, like, $5,000 suit and the $25,000 Rolex. And we're I just... We're at the Beverly Hills Hotel yeah, and I'm right, wearing pajamas. Yeah, or yeah. the character is wearing pajamas. No, there was just some, some really great scenes. I love my agents, right? Yeah. Um, but Hollywood agents, their job is to make money. Yeah, right. And sometimes um, 
a lot of times in my life I do things for reasons that have nothing to do with money. Right, right. Um, you know, I, I wrote this book not for money or, or for fame or for anything other than it made me deeply happy to do it. Yeah. And honestly, I'm here at your store not because you're giving me money or, or for un any other reason that I, I deeply love bookstores and people who read books yeah. and people who sell books and yeah. because it's fun. Well, good. We're all in this together. Right. <laughs> I think for the same Very reasons, Very much right? so. Yeah. You know, I, I, I think I, I like this book so much because I noticed that you could see the differences happening to Jay from his time in Paris to then we're looking to 2017. And you could see the same person, but you saw him in a different way. I, I thought that that's I really like to s compare those things and really see that happening as the book progresses. I think if you've yeah. lived a big, crazy, bold yeah. life, you're going to be a different person between 21 and 47, right? right? Yeah. You, you'll have felt pain, you'll have fallen mm -hmm. in love, you will right. have fallen out of love, you'll have had hopefully some successes and most likely a lot of failures. And um, I know I'm a lot different than I was at 21. Yeah. People who knew me then would would say yes you're exactly the same and absolutely 100% right. different yeah sure but i'd also i don't think i'd ever seen bo a book that did that right mm -hmm. gave you the same person in these radically different timelines yeah. and and gave you a person at the beginning who had a dream come true or who had a dream and and, and was working to try to make it come true sure. and then the same person dealing with sort of the fallout of that dream of right yeah um, I want to move on to your YA writing and uh, Full Phantom Five. You know, you you work and you have a lot of writers who work under that and producing some books. But tell us about how that works and how do you hire writers? And you know, when Pitticus Lore came out, how many people made up Pitticus Lore when you're thinking about the the Lorian series? <laughs> um, so Full Phantom Five exists because of my love of art. Okay. I had written a book that was l released in a limited way in the United States, mostly because of, of threats that were made against me. So we didn't commercially release it. A yeah. book called The Final Testament of the Holy Bible. 10,000 copies were published in, in, in America. Um, after I wrote that, um, I was just tired. I'd had four books come out, three had hit number one. Um, I was tired. Um, I was writing the text for a book for the artist Damien Hurst, and I went to his art production facility, which mm -hmm. is a couple hours outside of London, and just uh -huh. walked around with him, and, and I thought it was astonishing. Um, he would come up with the ideas for art, and other people would actually make it. Mm -hmm. it it's an old idea, yeah. a Renaissance idea, um, and I decided to- like a guild in some way. Kind of like a guild? Oh, yeah, right. Okay. I decided to try to try to apply that idea and that system to mm -hmm. the making of books. So I came up with the idea for I Am Number Four. Yeah. I found a writer. Um, the first book in that series we wrote together. Mm -hmm. um, Full Fathom Five's published over, at this point, over 200 books. That's incredible. We've had 35 New York Times bestsellers. Incredible. We've had 16 number ones. Um, and it still works the same way. We come up with an idea. Um, we find a writer who we think can execute that mm -hmm. idea out. We work with them as they write it. I have editors who work with me. Sometimes I rewrite it. Sometimes other people rewrite it. Um, there have been a lot of books in the Lorian series. Um, I've, at this point, 10 novels and probably 25 novellas. Right. Um, I don't know the exact number of writers we've had on that project, but I would guess it was five or six. Yeah. Um, and, and we sort of... One of the reasons we use the name Pitticus Lore is because it's not a single person. Right, it's a right. group of people it's who a work. collaboration, artistic collaboration. Yeah. yeah. I love those books, yeah. and kids love those books. Yeah. We've sold millions of copies right. and have a devoted audience, and it's cool. Do you still enjoy that part of, of writing? And, and, and I still do it, your... for sure. Yeah. Okay. I mean, we're still yeah. published. A, a Pitticus Lore book came out um, two months ago. And okay. we have two new series launching with Harper Collins. It'll both be published yeah. under Pitticus's right. name. I do still enjoy it. I say, like, my children can't really read the adult books I read. I write. Yeah. You know, they can read them when they're <laughs> 18. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and I love making books that they can read. Sure. Yeah. 
Okay, um, I end these interviews with a, a lightning round quiz. All so right. Since you are a reader um, extraordinaire and... Is it like a literary trivia? It is. It's real fast. Wow. It's You know all the answers because these are... Okay, what was your favorite book when you were a kid? The Great Brain. Um, how about, do you remember something from high school that still stayed with you? Yeah, like I read Jack Kerouac in high school, you know, On the Road. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very much. Okay, how about something when you were at Denison when you were in college? Uh, Tropic of Cancer I read in college, and that's why I became a writer. Yeah, I yeah. read that book, and, and it changed my life. And that's in Katerina as well. Okay, how about um, when you were in Paris, something you read that really... Reading in Paris. So I read, tried to read as many French writers as I okay. could. Baudelaire and Rimbaud both broke my heart. Victor Hugo, yeah. Dumas, Dumas wildly underrated. Like, The Count of Monte Cristo is not just a great story that's been made into a movie about 40 times, but it's a, a crushingly magnificent work of literature and art. Right. Um, a lot of Paris, not just for me, was books, but also looking at art. Mm -hmm. Auguste Rodin, Manet. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Have you ever faked reading a book? Yeah. Have I ever faked reading a book? For sure. Many a time I've been sitting <laughs> on a bench just watching people walk by with a book in my lap and I'd see a pretty girl and I'd get nervous and I'd just look down and pretend to be reading yeah. my book. Okay. Is there any book you wish you had written? Any book I wish I had written? There are a bunch of, uh, yeah, <laughs> dozens. Yeah. All right. How about a book that you could use to squash a bug? That means you really hated it. You know, I don't really hate books. Okay. I, I used to hate on books and hate on writers. And at this point in my life, anybody, I have deep respect for anybody who can sit down and put the work in to write a book. Anybody who is persistent enough to get it published. Anybody who okay. loves books yeah. is good with me. Okay. And a book you've been an evangelist for, I mean, you could recommend this book to many different types of readers. Um, a book, Siddhartha by Herman Hess. I always call Siddhartha by Herman Hess the perfect book. Yeah. It's 105 pages long. There's not a word in it that's unnecessary. It's a beautiful, incredible, life-changing work of literature that won him the Nobel Prize. And something you read with your kids when they were really little that you loved to curl up and read together. Uh, uh, what's the... What's the um, we read all the books and then we watched a Netflix series. It's the guy. Oh, the series of unfortunate events. Yeah, a series Lemony of Snicket. unfortunate events. Yeah, so right, yeah. I have a, a, a 13 year old, an 11 year old, yeah. and now an 8 year old. And I've had the great pleasure of having gone through it with the 13 year old and 11 year old already. Yeah. And the 8 year old is now at a reading level where we can do it. Yeah, oh, that's um, great. The only bummer is she already watched a Netflix series. <laughs> But yeah, there's. Yeah. But just yeah. like, just sure. like, with there's a million great books you can oh, curl sure. up yeah. and read with oh, your kids. Absolutely. Okay, and what are you reading now? Something you read recently you really liked? I'm reading a book um, called The Long Haul by a dude named I think his name's Finn Murphy, mm -hmm. um, which is a memoir about being a long haul trucker. Yeah. And it's yeah. awesome. And he was just on NPR talking about that. I did not know he yeah. was just on NPR. No, my husband listened to it and he said it's awesome. He wants the book. He wants to read the book. But I'm loving the book. My yeah. wife recommended it to me. I get most of my book recommendations from my wife. Yeah. Um, and she told me she thought I should read it. Yeah. I was reading it in the car on the way here, and yeah. it's awesome. Okay. Well, great. Hey, good score. Thanks. Well, well, James, thanks so much for sitting down and talking with thanks me. Thanks for and, having me. And thank you for Katerina. And come thanks. back when thank your next you. book comes out. I'll be here again. Right. Thank you for All having right. a badass bookstore and right. for loving books and keeping them alive. Okay. What a great conversation with New York Times bestselling author James Fry. You may remember him from A Million Little Pieces. This is his new novel. It's called Katerina, a great novel about an author who goes back in time to his years when he was young in Paris and now as a famous author looks back. Thanks for joining me on Authors Revealed.